during 1993. Audiences of more than a million people at various air shows all over the world will have seen Max Schock doing thrilling aerobatics in the sky. Usually, some of the onlookers cry out or catch their breath when it looks as if his plane is surely going to crash. Look at that, look at that, holy mackerel, Max Schock. He did a beautiful job up there. They applaud and wonder and perhaps puzzle over why a man would put himself in danger that way. Meanwhile, throughout the exhibitions, the audiences hear information from the announcer about the fuel Shock is using. It's clean burning, renewable, economical, and it creates jobs. using alcohol fuel, and the first to fly an international flight using alcohol fuel. It's called ethanol. Does the word sound familiar? It's just plain alcohol. You see, Max Shock isn't flying for thrills or fortune. He's showing people that ethanol is an alternative fuel to aviation gasoline. This high performance fuel is renewable and better for our environment than petroleum products. During an air show in Italy, Schock met Grazia Zadin, a noted pilot and flight instructor, and they began to get ready for the first transatlantic flight using pure ethanol as fuel. They flew the prototype of an experimental aircraft, a canard type plane called the Velocity. It's a single engine plane made entirely from fiberglass and weighing only 1,200 pounds. It cruises at 200 miles an hour. It was only possible to take a minimum of supplies. The plane had no heat, so they loaded as much clothing as possible to help keep warm, along with two survival suits, flotation gear, parachutes, and life rafts. A daunting journey lay ahead for the pilots. The purpose of this flight was uh, to demonstrate the reliability and the performance of this fuel beyond the shadow of any doubt. Uh, we chose to uh, cross the Atlantic with a single engine airplane uh, powered solely by ethanol, uh, which we think was the ultimate proof for this fuel. What Grazia said about the reliability, uh, it, I think it's an obvious thing. Uh, anybody that flies an aircraft across the Atlantic, particularly in the wintertime, when uh, the weather is so bad and cold, uh, you have no survival time in that water, even with the survival suits. Uh, it's, it's, just not a, it's just not a question. So we are really relying solely on the performance of the engine, and that involves and then that involves reliability of fuel. Now the performance aspect of that is we had to take off from St. John's with the aircraft very heavily overloaded to have enough fuel to get clear to the Azores. So the aircraft was more than 30% over the established gross weight of, of the aircraft and uh, the fact that the ethanol gave us, in that engine probably gave us about 20% more power, uh, gave us a safety factor for the takeoff. They left Texas headed for St. John's, Newfoundland, where the transatlantic flight would be launched. The first part of the crossing went smoothly until bad weather caused a problem with navigational aids, forcing a difficult landing on one of the islands in the Azores. We did have an interesting moment approaching uh, the Azore Islands. Uh, we had lost all the navigation aids and uh, we were in bad weather. We had to dead reckon on the island of Flores. When we arrived there and we overflown the um, runway, the turbulence was so high that we were all over the airplane. So that landing was, uh, to say the least, interesting. It was uh, uh, bad weather, very, very high winds, and a small runway. But uh, it was done. <laughs> Max did a very good job. We had uh, to break uh, uh, with four feet <laughs> the airplane, and uh, we stopped. And, uh, but apart from that, everything else, all the aspects of the flight that they were uh, related to the, the fuel, the ethanol, 
we are flawless. When we finally got stopped in the Azores, we knew that the difficult part of the flight was over. And in fact, we had flown out of uh, an island where it was ice and snow, and we'd flown over some very, very cold water. In the Azores, after we landed and things were quieted down, it was pastoral. We heard cows up on the hills, we heard goats uh, on a field beside us, and it was just a wonderful calm, a feeling of, uh, wonderful feeling of achievement and calmness and uh, just accomplishment. It, just a feeling that was worth every bit of the uh, anxiety and effort that we put in, the years of anxiety and effort we put into that flight. After the weather settled down, they took off again, and the craft landed in Lisbon. Landing in Lisbon, uh, we did not uh, feel as strongly. First of all, it was easier to find Europe. It's much, it's much bigger than a little island in, <laughs> in the ocean. And uh, it was also a shorter flight and an easier flight. Of course, we were happy because that was the end of the transatlantic part, which was the hardest. But uh, we did not have that strong feeling we felt in the Azores. When we arrived at the Azores, we decided that's it, we made it. <laughs> Days later, Max and Grazia reached Paris, having flown 6,000 miles and successfully completing the first transatlantic flight using ethanol. For this flight and his work with ethanol, Schock was awarded the Harman Trophy, the world's most prestigious aviation award. It was presented to him in Washington, D.C. by Dan Quayle, who was then vice president. Aircraft powered by ethanol must be proven in the marketplace, and certification is a requirement for an aircraft to engage in commercial operations. The center is currently certifying three aircraft types on ethanol. One of these is the Cessna 152, the most common trainer in the United States. The second is an agricultural aircraft, and the third is a high-performance aerobatic biplane. Demonstrations and presentations are a very important part of this project since Schock feels that spreading information about ethanol to all those involved with aviation will help to clarify any questions or misinformation. As a result of this endeavor, the United States is taking the lead in the development of ethanol as an aviation fuel. What lies ahead for Max, Grazia, and now their baby son, Ivan? The baby certainly doesn't seem worried, and with parents like his, he'll probably be up in the air before we know it. But he does remind us why all of this effort is so vital. It's because future generations look to us to provide clean air and fuels that are environmentally safe, renewable, and economically sound. We cannot afford to let them down.